Eloise, why do you think this is? Why do you think it's people that are about our age that we get so jealous of? Well, I think it's because they're the closest, um, they're in like the same stage of life. And so we're more likely to compare ourselves to them just because it's a natural one to one. You're not looking up, you're not looking down, you're looking across. It's, it's, uh, it's latitude and all, I think. Alex, what's your take? Why do you think it's people our age specifically that get us going in terms of jealousy? Yeah, that's a good point. Like it's, Eloise said, it's like looking across, not ahead or in the past. Like, and it's, it's easy. Like when you're in high school and you're doodling in your notebook, you're like, oh, when I grow up, I'm going to make it big. Like when I'm out of school, I'm going to make it big. And then all of a sudden you're out of school and you don't make it big, but the person next to you did. <laughs> and it's, yeah, that's. Eloise, what's an example of somebody who is a peer who you felt jealous with at one point in your life? So there was someone I knew in art school, still know, who a professor at the time kind of set us up as in a one-to-one comparison all the time. And to this day, I have not been able to shake my intense envy for this person. She's gone on to achieve a huge amount, deservedly. She's very talented and received a lot of accolades, but whether it's because she's my age or because we kind of had that foundation of having someone at a formative period um, line us up next to each other and talk about how much better she was, was this than me, during a frankly, I've always? never been able to shake. It was during critique. It was during classes, like tutorials. It was a lot. Yeah, that's not cool. As a teacher, I'm very, very conscious about lining students up side by side because I think that that's a recipe for disaster. And in fact, you guys, we do have this video that Jordan and I did about comparing yourself to other artists. That's another thing that I think a lot of us do, which can be very, very toxic in a lot of situations. Alex, who's your peer that's just driving you up the wall with artistic jealousy? (laughs) it's like it's based on how hard the children's book publishing world is to get into and how people like i've known people who get into their i met someone at the last conference who got into his 50s and just published his first book and it was like hooray and then this fear of mine like they've published five books so far (laughs) and they're younger than i am and it's just like oh my lanta like (laughs) Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, and it's like, it's such a funny thing because it's a, children's literature and children's publishing is like, that's where all the nice people go. Like everyone just wants to make children's lives better. <laughs> and it's so funny, like still feeling a feeling of jealousy in that realm, you know? Isn't that almost one children's book a year since graduation, Alex? Pretty much, actually, yeah, pretty much. See, that's annoying Just no like, matter yeah, how old that person is. Like, if that person <laughs> was 20 years older than me and they're publishing that many books in that short period of time, that's going to bother me <laughs> tremendously. Now, Alex, how did you know <laughs> about this like... person's success? Because I don't think this is somebody you're best friends with. So where did you find out that they had published all these books? It was... Like, first from, like, just, like, interconnectivity, like, it's funny, like, in the first of phrases that makes me sound old, like, Instagram just started to get big, like, right around when I graduated. (laughs) And so then it was just, like, finding people and, like, seeing everybody's success, everyone from, like, high school friends, like, college friends and all that. Um, And then I actually got, like, a magazine with an interview of them and i was like oh no shit (laughs) that's wild (laughs) so that was i get like yeah but no it was really just the interconnectivity of the internet right well i have my own version and i have to say guys i think mine takes the cake (laughs) granted i am older than you and my generation has had (laughs) more time to get out there but somebody my year long long time ago when they were like 30. I mean, I'm 43 now, so this is a long time ago. They won the top grant in the field. 
and they were something like 32. And this, this is the grant. The amount of money you win for this grant is offensively huge. It's enough to just make you so mad. <laughs> and I just was like, what is going on? And the thing that drove me crazy is that this particular grant, usually it's given to people who are already famous. And so it's almost like a pat on the back in a way. And yet this person didn't really have that. They just sort of won it out of the blue. I thought, who are you related to? Like, how did this happen? Like, because I think the thing is sometimes you see people have success and you end up saying, oh, I get it. Oh, I understand why they got success because that's really amazing. Like that girl's films, Eloise, that you talked about. But this person, I'm like, what did they do? I don't understand. Like, it was just baffling to me. And to this day, it still makes my blood boil. So it's, oh my God, like I still have not let it go. Like Eloise, how come you and I can't let it go? Good question, Clara. If I knew the answer to that, I'd be getting a lot more sleep at night than I do. <laughs> Let's see, Sista Bear is saying, I actually get a lot of inspiration from older artists and artists my age. It gives me a glimpse into the future. Wow, Sister Bear, you, you are way more positive <laughs> Me and Eloise have managed to be. All right, let's take a look at our next category of people that we are very jealous of. And that would be your friends who are artists. So Eloise, who is your artist friend that you're jealous of? Uh, my artist friend who I'm jealous of back in the day was definitely Lauren Welch, fellow art prof TA. And I... Uh, basically solved that jealousness by reaching out to Lauren and becoming excellent friends with her <laughs> and becoming a collaborator so that her talent and my ta I could absorb her talent into my zone and slowly gain um, her talents. Well, Elise, how does that happen though? Because I honestly can't imagine ever making that transition. Were you not as good friends when you were jealous of Lauren? I just didn't really know her. Um, I knew like what she did. Like I saw images of her work and like maybe we talked a little bit, but it was really like, a, oh my God, what you're doing is brilliant. I wish to be you like, do these things that you do. I don't know. I, it was just all over the place. But um, I don't know. I guess I've never really been someone who's had difficulty just reaching out to people and being like, hey, can we hang out? Um, I think it is... You don't want to do that with absolutely everybody. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, just the circumstances were right. And I think, like... What it really comes down to is that you are jealous of people who do things that you like. Um, and if you are very well adjusted, you can pivot that into positivity and inspiration. That's right. Alex, you had told me that you actually have been able to take a more positive spin, like the artist who had published those five children's books. You told me that you now have a different view of that. What is that view? Yeah, and it's like, I, I jokingly said this to you, but in all honesty, it's like that view came from like a lot of years of non-art related, just therapy and just taking care of myself in that way. But the view is essentially that the world needs more good art and the world needs more, like in my case, children's book stories. Like for every one children's book made, that's countless children that benefit from that. Um, and so kind of like what Eloise was saying with Lauren is kind of like whether in reality or even just for yourself mentally turn the people you're jealous of into your friend in your own mind so you're not like he said at the beginning of this video Clara like you're not you're no longer jealous or envious of them you're celebrating them because you view them as a friend you know well, and I also think that what I like about our field is that there's always room for more of us it's not like there's only 50 spots and, oh, they're all taken. I can't be an artist anymore. I mean, I've always thought it must be horrible to be an athlete because there's only one gold medal. 
I mean, you're either the gold oh, medalist yeah. or you lost. <laughs> Nobody cares about who won bronze and silver. It's really the gold medalist that really matters. And so I suppose if there's any positive spin on any of this for me, it's that just because someone else has really great work, it doesn't prevent me from doing really good work. In fact, it's sort of my fault if I let them get to me in that way. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying that that's a way to take on more proactive responsibility. Neil is saying, I get jealous mm -hmm. on my one classmate, but as we get to know each other, the jealousy disappeared. It's like we know that we both have stuff to work on in terms of art. Ani is saying, I think we tend to get jealous of the people we are very similar to. You either get along with them very well or become jealous. Yep, I would say that's absolutely true. In fact, another category that we had talked about earlier before the stream started was actually artists that you don't know in real life. And Alex, you've got two very specific examples. So why don't we start out oh, yeah. by looking at Omar Ryan. I'm gonna pull up his slide now. So tell us about Omar Ryan and why you're jealous of them, even though you've never met them, never spoken to them on the phone before. So the reason I'm glad we're talking about like jealousy of people you don't know is because I love imagining that Omar is a wonderful person in real life and the kindest soul. And my jealousy isn't related to their accomplishments, but with their technique, if that makes sense. Like it's, I don't know that, like if a golfer watches somebody do a hole in one, you're just like, oh, that's, how did you do that? Uh, and that's kind of the vibe I get from people that I haven't met, but the jealousy of, like I'm not jealous of whoever won the last Oscar for character design or whatever, like <laughs> clearly. But like I'm jealous of being able to do that with a brush, which I think is a different sense of jealousy than jealous of a peer's accomplishments. Eloise, are you ever jealous of other filmmakers and their technique or process? Oh, I mean, all the time. I, it's, I like, and I would say that I'm not necessarily limiting myself to not being jealous of people who like win the big awards or whatever because of uh, having like, oh God, <laughs> you've got that still up on the screen, Clara. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw that come up. Um, and like, so the thing is, um, Like, I have such high expectations of myself that I see, like, I, I you know, I, I, and so much ambition that it's, it's a completely self-defeating, uh, pro like, situation because I'm always going to be, like, whenever I, like, crest a certain mountain, there's always going to be another mountain to climb. And, you know, if I'm not feeling, like, bad about myself, you know, because of not having like work or something like that like say i have a lot of work then i'll still fe start feeling bad about myself and how i haven't won an oscar yet before i turn 30. and it's it's like i can't win speaking of turning <laughs> 30 i don't know those of you who are watching if you've ever seen this article that comes out every year it's published by forbes magazine which is a very i guess you would describe it as a pretty corporate businessy type of magazine and they have this article, it's called 30 Under 30. And basically they pick different fields like visual arts and business or architecture or something like that. And they pick 30 people who are under the age of 30 who they think are doing really innovative, exciting work. And I guess the joke is whenever that list comes out every year, people say, I wanna see the list be 40 over 40 because it's just so annoying. It's like, oh, well, if you haven't done this by the time you're 30, you're not cool enough. Like, Alex, you've seen people you know and went to school with on that list before. How does that make you oh. feel when it comes out? It's funny because it hits to what I can't... Yeah, when you said earlier, like, it doesn't bother you if someone's not in your field. Like, my next-door neighbor in the dorms was on it, but he's an industrial designer. So I was just like, 
yeah, dude, way to go. <laughs> like, whereas if he was in the exact same field that I was in, I would I would be seething with jealousy. So yeah, like I couldn't. And yeah, I don't know. I I feel like if it makes anyone feel better, I feel like that whole concept is just very ageist. Just saying like. Oh, if you haven't done it by this point, it's too late and you won't. So just give up now. And it's, yeah, no, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm blessed in having met enough people like in later in life who achieved their goals then that it's like, oh, hell yeah. Like it's, it's doable. Like your life doesn't stop when you don't make it onto the 30 under 30 You know what really helped me is that I stumbled across some article and it was all about these artists and innovators who didn't like make it officially to what they're known for today until after the age of 40. For example, Julia Child, who is world renowned as this incredibly influential chef. I mean, she didn't start cooking until she was after 40. Vera Wong, who is very famous for her wedding dresses. She's a fashion designer. She was working in a completely different field before she started designing her wedding dresses after the age of 40. And so I think what helps me is to say, you know what? There's all these other people for whom it did not happen immediately. There are a lot of people who win the lottery. And yes, that does happen. And it's infuriating. It's obnoxious. But look at all those other people who paid their dues and did their time. And look at what they did. I think that's very, very exciting. All right. Go ahead. Well I think it's because we, we fetishize the young and sexy, you know, like those are the stories that everyone wants to look at because it's like it feeds into a narrative that's very attractive. Mm -hmm. Alex, you said that you have some friends who are artists who you are jealous of. Did you turn it into a collaboration like Eloise? How did you deal with that? I think that for me, not as much because it was not quite in a the work wasn't functionally collaboratable and i think objectively speaking like part of why i was jealous is because their work was at a 10 when my work was objectively at like a seven like i wasn't there yet um but the collaboration that i found how to use was how to recognize like oh if i'm feeling jealous about it it's work that i want to be doing you know so kind of using that gut reaction as like a divining rod to tell me like what kind of work that I should be making. Not full on like copy tracing paper kind of thing, but like that thing of like, oh, I'm really feeling something about this work that tells me that my work should go closer towards this direction maybe. When Willoughby is saying, do you think we can come to better terms with jealousy by redefining our ideas of markers of quote success? Well, let me ask you something, Eloise. Has your idea of, quote, success, whatever that's supposed to mean, has that changed since you got out of art school? <sighs> Definitely has changed. I mean, I think it's, it's changed even year to year. Um, it's not like there was one big change. And I think, like, a really good example of this is that in, like, the last six months, I secured more stable employment at sort of a in a um fancy environment doing something that in a lot of ways was a dream job and prior to that i'd been very orient like sort of obsessed with the idea of um like not being successful because i didn't have stable employment and like now i do and so now i've moved on to being upset about other things <laughs> the goalpost move um yeah. well yeah. i would tell you for me my goals are completely different <laughs> than they were a long long time ago because my whole checklist when i finished my master's degree was i'm going to be a tenured professor i'm going to have a show in a new york city gallery i'm going to be in major museum collections i'm going to do artist residencies I'm going to give artist lectures, the, the whole shebang, the whole academic artist life. I thought that was my goal. And the thing is, ever since I realized, wow, 10 years have passed and I have not done a single one of those things, I realized I don't want to do that anymore. And in some ways, for me, the ship has sailed in terms of becoming a tenured professor. I'm too old for it now. 
And um, I think that for me, once I threw out those old goals, I made my own new ones. Everything's different. I used to think, I want to be in the Venice Biennale. I want to be in the Whitney Biennial someday. And now I don't even think about that. It just does not cross my mind anymore. So I think constantly redefining what you think that quote success is, I think is really, really important. Lisa H is saying being successful can be influenced by more than technical ability. There are other talents such as good communication that's often hard to recognize or appreciate in others. Absolutely, because you know something, I said this on the stream yesterday that a lot of people tend to have this misconception that, oh, where you go to art school determines your success. It does not. You know what determines your success? Are you a jerk or not? That actually makes a big difference when you're trying to get a job. Like, Alex, have you ever worked with somebody who's a big pain in the butt before? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, and it's so funny, even in non-artist settings, it's just like, it's amazing how much not being a pain and being kind. And it's like, I barely know you and I would do anything for you. <laughs> but it's like, if you're minorly a butt, then it's just like, what? <laughs> like, no, I'm not going to light you a letter, letter of recommendation. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's such a small thing. And I think it kind of there hits really this. It's like simple not simple things like that. Yeah. And I think if you let like jealousy you have of other artists and other people kind of like get into your bones, you know, then I think that that can hinder you being kind to new people you meet, you know? Yeah. And not trying to pretend that you aren't feeling the way you're feeling, but to kind of let it flow through you yeah. um, and like sit with it. I think I, you know, I'm have mixed success doing that, but I think that it is where I aspire to because I think it is, I don't think it's possible to really eliminate jealousy yeah. from the artistic experience or the human experience, honestly. So I, I in, so it's not really an, it's not really a feel jealous or don't feel jealous dichotomy. It's a feel jealous or feel okay about feeling jealous. <laughs> But I think that's a really good point, like, Eloise, know. because I think once you realize, hey, that is normal and healthy, that's something we all experience. This is the type of thing that all artists feel that nobody wants to acknowledge that we feel. And yet from reading stuff in the chat, it seems like everybody else in the chat feels the same way. Neil is saying, could you do a stream about how not to be a jerk? I know it might be common sense, but as someone who is not a good socializer, I find myself really anxious about it. Neil, that totally makes sense to me. I think that there are some things that are straightforward, like don't tell somebody I hate you. But there are some behaviors that I think can be easily misinterpreted in a professional situation. So we will note that for the future. Um, 10,000 Crows is saying, I used to think being an artist would be an isolated experience, but has actually ended up being the most connected and social thing in my life. That is great, 10,000 Crows. I'm really happy to hear that because you know something? We spend enough time by ourselves in the studio. <laughs> I think we deserve some more social time. Okay, the next category yeah. that we're gonna talk about, artists who are not your age, but they're just a little bit younger than you. Maybe they're one year younger, maybe they're two years younger, something like that. For some reason, this is the one that burns me the most, you guys. I don't know why. Alex, do you know why this one's so infuriating? I think for me, when I'm thinking about it, it's because it gives you that sense of not just like, oh, like you missed the boat kind of thing, but just kind of like, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a clever metaphor for it, but just like seeing, like, almost like, ah, like if it, oh, this is it. It happens like right at the point when you're learning and you're growing, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, this is how I grow into it. And then you see someone who like kind of beelines right past you. Eloise, have you had this experience before? That person is just a little bit younger. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the 30 under 30 list, man. It's, it's killer. <laughs> it's all these like recent graduates and 
Um, you know, it, but okay. So, and again, this is going to sound like the person who, you know, didn't get the big prize, who's, like, trying to come up with ways of justifying, like, why things are good. But for what it's worth, I think that I'm at least 10 years away from doing my best work. Or, like, beginning to do my best work. And I don't know that I would necessarily want to be suddenly, like, pushed into, like, a really big, like, spotlight or success doing the level of work, say, that I was doing two years ago, or so forth. I I don't actually know that that would be a good thing for me. So on my best days, when I am the best possible version of myself, I kind of have an attitude that we all mature at our own rate, and that's really important on my best days. (laughs) So every day. (laughs) Right. Every day. (laughs) <laughs> no yeah like that's kind of like what you said of like how that like embrace the jealousy don't like ignore it because i think we can all either for ourselves or people we know like recognize those moments when someone's jealous but they're not acknowledging it instead they're saying like oh my god that's so great isn't it great that's the best that's the best thing in the world i love it i love it so much i'm not jealous at all you know and that's not fighting it it's just yeah denial saying, isn't that amazing yeah and just recognize Lisa it. H is saying, wow, yeah. it would feel awful to hit your peak at 25. Exactly. I really agree with that. And I have a couple of colleagues, some of them who are a lot older than me, who did their best work when they were 50. And that's incredible. I mean, I don't think that everything has to happen again before you're 30. And when I look back at the older work I was doing, I'm like, oh, thank God I was not popular. Because <laughs> I don't know that that is the work that I would like to be known for. I feel like in the scheme of things, what I'm doing now feels so much more exciting than what I was doing when I was 30. So in some ways, I'm sort of glad about that. Let's see. So I think that... Um, no, sorry, sorry, go. Do you mind if I... Okay. I, I feel like um, part of it is also there's a scarcity mentality. Um, And I wonder if this is something that's particularly put on, like, um, maybe, like, people from various forms of, like, marginalized identities um, in a sense that, so, like, there's this, like, idea that, like, women will always, like, tear each other down rather than, like, working together. And it's because there's this, like, scarcity mentality of, like, oh, there can only be one or... Um, there's only an, it's like there's only enough room for there to be like one black queer video artist so there's only enough room to be like whatever and I think that um, in a lot of ways we like it's sort of like set up that way and so we have to sort of fight like um, things that are stacked to lead to that kind of jealousy. Okay, well, you know what, you guys? I do have one positive story to tell about my jealousy, remarkably. When I was in art school, I was in this painting class. It was a portrait painting class. And it was, I think, juniors and seniors. So I was a senior, and there was one person who was one year younger than me who was such a good oil painter. Like, I, nothing I did could come close to measuring up. You know when you feel like you're really progressing and then you come in and you're like, yeah, I didn't knock it through the park, but I'm really making progress. That was not the case. It was like nothing I did could even come close. And I just wouldn't remember, I'd go to class feeling so discouraged. I'm like, okay, let's see what they brought in. Let's see how much better it is than anything I could ever possibly do. And it depressed me so much because I was used to being pretty accomplished at that point. It just destroyed my self-esteem when I was in art school. And, you know, many years later, I actually asked myself, I said, you know what? What artwork can I do that this person can never do? What am I capable of? And I thought to myself, you know what? I can talk about my experience with depression. She can't talk about that. That's not something that they have experienced. It's something that I know about. It's a part of me and I can talk about that and I can make work about that. And that to me was very empowering because I realized that I could do something that they inherently were not capable of. And I think that is when things really started to click. 
that doesn't mean that I didn't Google them and check out their website and see what they were doing and say to myself, oh, yeah, I think I'm engaging conceptually with my work. Yeah, I think I'm doing pretty well. So we're all doing petty things like that. But for me, that was my one moment of resolution. On the other hand, I did know somebody who got hired for a full-time job that I applied for, and they got it when they were 28 years old and one year out of grad school. And I had a much longer resume. (laughs) I was a few years older. Guys, that one hurt. So how do you deal with that? Alex, you got some advice for me? I think it's kind of like the first story helps solve the second one. It's just kind of like taking everything. I don't know, like this, it's one of those things. It works for me. I don't know if it'll work for anyone else. It's just like kind of for every negative emotion, like looking at why it's there and like recognizing it and being like, what in this situation is drawing this out of me? Is it telling me what I desire? Is it telling me what I want to change? And then making a positive action based on that. Let's see, Annie is saying, my favorite thing is looking back at the old art of people I used to be jealous of. I can see all the flaws now where before I only saw how it was better than mine. That is great advice, Annie. I am totally going to go back and do that because it's true. Your taste of (laughs) what you think is amazing artwork, it changes. My idea of great artwork is not the same as it was 20 years ago. So I think that's a really great advice for people because then you realize how much things are in flux and things are not etched in stone. So that's a really great attitude to have. I hope you guys will join us Mm -hmm. on Discord. I usually am on Discord at least for the next 10 minutes after all of our live streams. You can find the invite link. It's in the video description below. Eloise, tell them about Discord and how much fun we're having in there. It's so much fun. We're having a great time. Join us. You guys will not find a nicer, more encouraging, supportive online art community. It's a great place to get feedback, to get help, to get resources. Please come hang out with us. I hope you will explore artprof.org. Lots of free stuff for you guys to check out there. Please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss out on anything. And also just so you can join the Art Pro family because we're the best. We totally kick butt. So hang out with us. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make all of this possible. Thank you guys, everybody in the chat for your wonderful contributions. I love reading the comments. In fact, somebody told me the other day that they were like upset that I had to re-upload the stream and there were no more live comments. <laughs> and I was really bummed out about that. So your comments are valued by everybody. It's not just the staff, it's the whole community. So thank you guys so much. Everybody stay safe, take care of yourselves. We will see you next time. Bye.